Welcome to Project Homes 35th Anniversary Gala, honoring Joan Dawson McConnell and Sister Mary Scullion. And the community of impact they have created with you. We invite you to turn your attention to the screen for a meaningful 35 second countdown that begins right now. And now, we'll build in me a home. I'm building me a home. I'm building me a home. I'm building me a home.
Let's hear it for Home for Harmony. Our Temple Music students and conductor Paul Rarden, who arranged this piece for tonight. The members of the choir come from the whole Project Home community residents, staff, and family. A special message from the President of the United States of America. Hello, Philadelphia. I married a Philly girl. And I know even Philly nuns are as tough as nails. Sister Mary is Philly. She protests wrongs and makes them right. People call her a powerhouse, a street angel. She and Joan will always walk a mile in the shoes of the forgotten and left behind. You know, we all first met on Amtrak, back when they were getting started on their mission, to give folks just a little shelter, hope, a fresh start, a fair shot, a good home. Project Home was a model for the nation, and my administration is right there with you, Sister Mary. Sister Mary and Joan lived the lessons of faith that the nuns taught me growing up. Honesty, decency, everyone's your equal, and everyone's entitled to be treated with dignity and respect. We look out for one another. We leave no one behind. You're the best of Philadelphia and the best of America. May God continue to bless you, Sister Mary and Joan. And now, welcome from our stage on the right side of our room, resident of Project Home and staff member Reggie Cintron. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Project Home 35th Anniversary Gala Celebration. For those who do not know me, my name is Reginald Cintron, and I am excited and delighted to have this opportunity to be here with you. I am proud to be a resident and employee of Project Home Community and a senior citizen of Philadelphia. In 2005, after struggling for years with homelessness, depression, and substance abuse, and there were times when I almost gave up, but by the grace of God, I found hope and recovery and a home at Project Home St. Elizabeth Recovery Residency. As I moved forward towards my new way of life, I was welcomed with open arms. I received abundance of services, resources, case management, peer leadership, health care, education, and employment. I was interested in the certified peer specialist training and learned how to help those in need of support for their recovery process. Today, I am a support staff part-time at Sacred Heart Recovery Residency, a wonderful facility that you will hear about later. I am a second tenor with the Deliverance Evangelistic Church Choir in North Philadelphia and was honored to sing with the Project Home, Home for Harmony Choir here tonight. So I really want you to know that we witness lives being restored and transformed 
each day at Project Home. It is possible. It's beautiful to see the homelessness is solvable and it take all of us. I thank you for being a part of this community. Love opens doors. Thank you, Sister Mary. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Mary, Scullion, and Joan Dawson McCannon, and the Project Home community. I am so grateful. I now have a special surprise for everyone. Please join me in welcoming the 48th Governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, to the stage. As we like to say around here, welcome home, Governor Shapiro. Thank you. Hey, Reggie, thank you so much for sharing your inspiring story. Thank you for letting us be part of your journey, and thank you for the warm introduction. It is an honor to be here with all of you and I want to begin by thanking the incredible co-chairs who have made tonight possible. I want to thank John Bon Jovi, who's in the house. And I want to thank his better half, Dorothea. They have been a team on a mission to do this important work for so many years. And let me give a special thanks to our other co-chairs, Lee and the soon-to-be first place Phillies owner, John Middleton. You all know the important work they do on the field. I know the work they do from their heart. It is meaningful. It is purposeful. And these are giant civic leaders. And we are grateful that they are here with us tonight and here with us every day doing this work. Sister Mary and Project Home are indeed living on a prayer. And they got a whole lot of fight in them, PH fight. I hope you see what I did there, right? I want to thank our presenting sponsors. I want to thank Pam and Ira for their meaningful contributions and support. They've provided so many blessings here at Project Home and in Philadelphia and all across this great commonwealth. I'm, of course, proud to join them and so many others here tonight, from President Joe Biden to, to so many elected leaders from across the city of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania and community partners and others who make sure that they invest in or help Project Home in so many impactful ways. Tonight, we are gathered, of course, to honor the tireless work of your two founders, Sister Mary Scullion and Joan Conant, over the course of three and a half decades. And thanks to the support of all of you in this room and their unique determination, Project Home has built more than 1,000 affordable housing units across the city. A 1,000 places where people now have roofs over their head and the dignity that comes from being in a home. They've developed a nationally lauded model to break the cycle of homelessness, providing permanent housing, education, medical care, job opportunities, to lift up our fellow Pennsylvanians who are in need. I've been privileged to know Sister Mary for many years, and I've been honored to observe her work for many more. You know, Sister Mary and I may not share the same faith, but I see many of the same values of my faith that are close in my heart to the work that she's taken on and does every day to support others. My own faith teaches me that no one is required to complete the task, 
but neither are we free to refrain from it. Now, I'm not here to preach at you, especially with Sister Mary in the house. But I am here to say I think that is a universal message, that each of us has a responsibility to get off the sidelines, to get in the game, and to do our part. Sister Mary has embodied that teaching every day. She has left an indelible impact on this city and our commonwealth. I admire the way she and Joan draw strength from their faith to take on big challenges. But here's what I find truly remarkable about Sister Mary, and that is her ability to help other people believe also, to help other people find their power and their ability to make a difference in our community. There's so many intractable, intractable problems in society today, so many that feel so big and so overwhelming that it's hard to know where to start to even solve them. And despite their best intentions, many people, well, they get discouraged by the complexity of problems, and so they turn away. Not Sister Mary, not Joan, not Project Home. Those are the exact problems that they set out to fix in their own unique way. It seems that at Project Home, you know, they live by the same mantra that we do in my administration. We live by three letters, G, S, D. And because there's so many members of clergy here tonight, I'll simply say that stands for get stuff done every day. That is what they do, and that is what they preach. And so Sister Mary's work has inspired others to follow her example and live a life of service in their own way. And that inspiration example will ensure that the work of Project Home lives on long after Sister Mary has finished her work, lives at least another 35 years, and I'm betting a whole lot more. Because thanks to her, a new generation of servant leaders will carry on with this work, following in the example that she and Joan have set. We are all better off because of her service. And I want you to know that the work of Project Home to combat homelessness and create pathways to employment, provide medical care and treatment to those who are in need, provide educational opportunities to all God's children? Well, that is the cause, the mission, the work that we are doing in my administration, and there is real synergy in our collective focus. Project Home's success here, well, it is our collective success, and we are committed to working together to build on their progress and make sure all Pennsylvanians, all Pennsylvanians can live with dignity. You know, my own faith not only requires me to get off the sidelines and get in the game, but it commands us to do something called tzedakah, to do charity, and to do our best to try and repair the world. I want to close by thanking all of you here in this room tonight. There's a heck of a lot of people in this room tonight. I want to thank you all for doing tzedakah. I want to thank you all for doing your work to repair the world and to show real love, true love, to our fellow Pennsylvanians, no matter what they look like, where they come from, who they love, or who they pray to. Because as Sister Mary and Joan and everyone at Project Home knows, love opens doors. Thank you. God bless you all. We appreciate your work. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Project Home and In Amazing Mercy is a big piece of me moving forward to actually living a life. It's a home built by nothing but love. That's what Project Home is all about. You save many when you save one. And that's what Project Home is. It's a package deal. The sky's the limit for me. In our 35 years of serving Philadelphia, there were certain moments that would define the future for Project Home. And one thing that has always been true, love opens doors. The presence of folks on the streets in Philadelphia in the late 
80s, it wasn't their problem. This was our problem. Something was wrong systemically that was forcing so many people onto the streets. And another level, something was wrong with our cultural values that we were permitting this human crisis at such a scale to continue. Sister Mary was passionate about wanting to do things to help people who were homeless and who needed help. And then we finally got physical facilities for her. The important thing about Mary Anderson Rec Center was that it was the beginning uh, of a shelter system in Philadelphia. In doing outreach, there were a few organizations that were beginning to work with people who were unsheltered on the streets of Philadelphia, but no one had an overall picture. We were the first city to actually do an outreach coordination center. We just thought it made sense. Now it's a national project that's done every year in every city. We had been struggling to open 1515 Fairmont for a while already. There were a lot of powerful folks in the city of Philadelphia who did not support us building 1515 Fairmount Avenue turned into a much deeper struggle that lasted five years, both in the courts and in the streets. In the Fair Housing Act, it was unclear whether the shelters were covered under it or not. This is bigger than just this building. This is a basic struggle for human rights, for civil rights, for fair housing. Together with the Department of Justice, Project Home sued the city and won. It's a victory clearly impacted um, homelessness nationwide. This really helped to provide a legal address to uh, facilitating building housing everywhere because this is the United States of America. We're supposed to be able to live wherever we want to live. Decades later, when we went to build the John Bon Jovi soul homes right down the street, and the neighbors who seriously opposed us in the 1990s came out in support of that project. And so to me, that's the power of relationships, the power of transformation, which is the Project Home story. When we came to the 19121 neighborhood, we met with community leaders, talked about what did the community need? What was their vision? The community, led by Helen Brown, Chris Whaley, and Priscilla Bennett, identified education and healthcare resources as important needs. We now have a state-of-the-art education center for the children in the neighborhood. We developed the Stephen Klein Wellness Center, which is integrated healthcare, healthcare without walls, both wellness services as well as primary care, behavioral health, and dental. And the Honickman Learning Center Comcast Technology Labs continues to this day to be a beacon of light and opportunity and has led so many people, both children as well as adults, to education and employment. We started a youth employment program a number of years ago, giving a lot of the children who are mostly high school summer jobs where they could learn how to operate in an office environment. There's so many children that has come out of the after school program and have gone on to do some wonderful things. I don't have words to explain what it has done for the community. That was the beginning of HOME. We saw the importance of housing, medical care, education, and employment. Through that work prevented folks from becoming homeless. We know that homelessness is bad for neighborhoods. It's also bad for people who are homeless. So why don't we look at how we can solve it together? These kind of solutions ultimately cost less to taxpayers. And business folk heard that a little bit better than politicians. That had a big impact over the years when business people would come and say, you know, Sister Mary's project, it actually could be very good. So the Empower Partnership was a game changer for Project Home. Prior to that partnership being formed through the vision of Lee and John Middleton, we were a developer through opportunity only. We were very limited in our ability 
to build a pipeline. This was a very different kind of private outreach to private philanthropists than what they had done before. Uh, really broadened the base of, of giving. And that was, I, that's been the most rewarding thing is to see the people who, who've come in and to see their reaction as their money is put into good use. I'm really pleased to be able to say that after all these years and all this effort, we have 25 partners in Empower and collectively we have contributed upwards of $100 million in private philanthropy, which in turn has been leveraged to over $250 million for the cause. What a real concrete difference Sister Mary and Project Home have made in this city. When we can get involved in healing our society, our community, and seeking to be part of a transformation of the lives of people who are very publicly and seriously broken and wounded, we are all being transformed. And every time we witness somebody come home, we feel a little bit more home ourselves. This just in a special message from United States Ambassador to Canada, David Cohen. Capturing what Sister Mary has meant to the city of Philadelphia and even to the nation is not easy. So I'll start with the headline, which is she's had an absolutely transformative impact on our city and on the nation in terms of the way in which we think about and handle homelessness. When she and Joan started out together, they were operating a small winter shelter in South Philadelphia. Today, Project Home is a more than $50 million a year enterprise with over 1,000 housing units and 19 separate projects, controlling a million square feet of real estate and positively impacting the lives of thousands of homeless individuals in Philadelphia. The power of Sister Mary, though, goes beyond the numbers and the numbers of people that she's affected. It's the innovative approach that she brought to homelessness. It was that innovative approach as well as the impact that caused Time Magazine to name her one of the 100 most influential people in the United States in 2009. There are not a lot of nuns who've gotten that recognition, and there certainly aren't a lot of homeless advocates that have received that recognition. So I've had a long and almost always positive relationship with Sister Mary. Um, when I first met her, I was a relatively new chief of staff to Ed Rendell as the mayor of the city of Philadelphia. Um, as, is her, as is her way, um, Sister Mary decided that she needed to demonstrate against the mayor and against the city. Um, and in doing so, she showed up in, on the second floor of, of City Hall and planted herself outside my office. That would have been fine, but that wasn't good enough for Sister Mary. Um, she decided to chain herself to my door. I was in the office at the time, which meant I couldn't get out of my office, um, and she wasn't leaving. And had multiple conversations over the phone um, with, the, with, the, with the police commissioner, um, who said the only way we're gonna get rid of her is we're gonna have to remove her. So I waited a long time, and he kept bothering me. And I said, OK, go ahead. Um, and so that leads to my most famous Sister Mary story, which is that the first time I met her, I had her arrested. Had her arrested for chaining herself to my office door. And it was the beginning of a great relationship, because I became one of Sister Mary's most fervent fans and we had, and I, it was my honor and my privilege to have a chance to work with her in battling issues relating to the homeless, food insecurity, um, and a whole, a whole host of issues relating to poverty in the city of Philadelphia. Congratulations, Mary and Joan, and thank you for everything that you've done. And still another quick message from our nation's capital. 
our representatives Dwight Evans, Brendan Boyle, and Mary Gay Scanlon together. Sister Mary, sorry I could not be there with you tonight, but I just wanted to say thank you for all you have done. You have made such a difference for so many Philadelphians, and I want to wish you luck as you embark on the next chapter of your journey. Sister Mary, you have left a profound impact on the lives of the least, the lost, and left behind. Your compassion, dedication, and tireless efforts over the decades have been nothing short of extraordinary. You've provided a true beacon of hope and compassion for Philadelphia's homeless community. Thank you. Sister Mary and Joan, your service will forever be cherished, and you have left an indelible and compassionate mark on this city. My family will be forever grateful for the opportunity to get to know Sister Mary and to start participating in the work of Project Home way back when the Women of Hope Shelter opened around the corner from our house. And as Sister Mary likes to say, none, none of us are home until, until all of us are home. Are home. As you finish your first course, take a look at our screens for a special blessing offered by students from the Honigman Learning Center, Comcast Technology Labs. We give thanks for the spirit of dignity. We honor the gifts, beauty, and wonder of each person. Dignity teaches us that each person is a miracle. We give thanks for the gift of community. Through community, our power is multiplied as we celebrate our unity and diversity. Through community, we are capable of miracles. We give thanks for the power of transformation. We are grateful for lives that have been transformed. We are grateful when neighborhoods are uplifted, when people have homes and jobs, when children have good schools and bright futures. We are grateful for those transformations that are living miracles among us. May our gratitude move us to affirm the dignity of each person to build a community of hope, and to work to transform our society towards one of justice and compassion for all. Enjoy your dinner. <laughs>